Sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties. Uh, welcome back to another episode of The Public Law with Bo and Tammy. This week, many, 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 many things have occurred. We've got uh, racism at play in the United States Incorporated. Ferguson, Missouri, we got a white FBI agent killing black kids and uh, we see in the same location where corporate counsel directed the death of this black child as per the 1924 Racial Integrity Act handed out by Virginia one of the federal states there, of Congress. CNN is reporting that there's three blacks on a 12-person grand jury weighing the Ferguson shooting case. So they've got a jury of ringers, Bo. What do you think? That's the way they roll. Well, I mean, they're going to continue to do that if we let them get away with it. Absolutely, and this is out of the book, the playbook. Uh, the Court Sciences Incorporated is the choreographer of these cases. And you can find them under the General Counsel's Underwriters in Texas, of course. And what you're seeing is play-by-play uh, -by -play on how Nazi Germany gets away with being Nazi Germany and whilst well, calling itself the United States of America or... Cambodia or Vietnam or Japan. Yeah, again, and they always claim to be a sovereign state, and by the definitions in their own United States Code, 28 U.S.C. 1603 and 1610, you can see quite clearly they're a foreign state. Absolutely, they they are a corporation. They're an incorporated state, and in that capacity they are acting under acts of commerce and private acts I mean that's what they do it's how they make their money cashing in on human trafficking and the murder of 18 year old children under congressional acts that legalize the murder of human children or the human race in general with the 1947 National Security Act that said human beings are the enemy of the foreign state. But the human beings always uh, seem to, for some reason, keep going down to the voting polls every two years. Um, in the United States, as it is referred to, on voting for this stuff. So. We're here to tell you there's another way that uh, they don't want you to consider. The attorneys do not want you to know about the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. Or the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. You can find it on Bono's Entertainment. When Congress, Congress came in and took their own act off of the government printing office site. Right. You can still see it at Cornell. Um... So, well, they were tampering with evidence. They were tampering with uh, what was on their own National <laughs> House of Representatives website. Was. Absolutely. Tampering so, with evidence. But they, but they gave them the ability, um, they gave themselves the ability to do that yeah. back uh, <laughs> in the Commerce Clause, as we just reviewed here with the wordsmiths of the Constitution. Absolutely. Now, I think I think I flubbed a little bit now in that because I said that the uh, Articles of Confederation written in 1777, uh, a year after the Constitution, well, 1776 was actually the Declaration of Independence. Absolutely. But it's all part of the same thing is what I meant. Right, the same contract. It's an ongoing perpetual union contract. And each... Time they bring in new titles. It's a new title that separates the document. 
and then all of a sudden there's an amendment or another article of incorporation or whatever else, whatever is beneficial <laughs> to uh, policy. That's the doctrine of necessity, of course, and the action of seen die. Now, the, every constitution is the Magna Carta seen die. When the attorneys came in and said, nobody's above the law, nobody, no king, nothing is above the attorney. And they raped and pillaged and grabbed everything they could while everybody's backs were turned. And they stripped every kingdom of its value. And these attorneys are vicious. They've always been cockroaches and armies and armies of cockroaches with armies for cockroaches, which is, of course, the FBI. And, and that's what everybody witnessed on the ground this week in Ferguson. The FBI came in to protect corporate counsel. After the FBI, that law enforcement officer was not a law enforcement officer. He was trained an FBI after the FBI killed one of our children, 40 members of the FBI showed up in Ferguson, Missouri in a protective stance to protect corporate counsel from being under investigation while everybody pointed the finger at, quote, law enforcement. It was not public law enforcement that murdered a child. It was FBI. And Israel this week, Prime Minister of Israel came out this week, though, and he says, look, Hamas and ISIS are the same entity. They're all the FBI. Israel has had enough, the, the location of Israel, not the corporation of Israel, has had enough. Gaza has had enough. Everywhere, everywhere has had enough of the FBI disguising itself as Hamas, as Israel, as Gaza, as whatever, ISIS. Wherever it is across the globe, generating revenue on behalf of corporate counsel, get rid of the FBI. We don't require an FBI to kill our kids any longer. I don't need the FBI raping my children. I don't need the FBI burning down my house. I don't need the FBI doing anything that it has been doing since its inception as a military on behalf of these psychopathic attorneys. Now it's like this. 1941, the U.S. Congress got World Dominion into the Atlantic Charter. 1948, the State of Israel was created. Of course, we should go back to 1947, the National Security Act, um, because that allowed for uh, things later to be created like Mossad, but uh, 1948, uh, the state of Israel was basically created with the uh, uh, Acts Artic of Congress. Articles of Incorporation. Articles of Constitution. Incorporation. Israel got a constitution. Yeah, the attorneys went in there with their post-conflict Constitutional Drafters Handbook, you can find that at PILG. And so, they love this ongoing conflict because it's continuing controversy, and that's how they cash in. Absolutely. So, they don't, it's, uh, they never wanted um, the never -ending a, a, solu a solution there, they just wanted constant turmoil. Right. It's the constant, constant growth of a, a very, very, very psychopathic corporation that continuously changes faces. It's the same thing. It's 
So always been the same thing. Rome, Nazi Germany, Greece, Sparta, all of these things. It's always been the same transgressors, the same psychopaths, moving across the earth as if they were cockroaches, and just picking things up and saying, well, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. I'll take that, I'll take that, I like that, that's mine. And that's how it's always been. Yeah, so all these congressional acts, they write and pass, basically what goes behind the scenes is, see, we need a mechanism to take this over. Right. We need a mechanism to uh, throw the people under the bus so we can make more money. Absolutely. So. They're only pirates. I mean, here's your, here's your. Uh, prima facie evidence, you don't need six million laws, codes, statutes, regulations, procedures for the public law. You only need to do no harm to adhere to public law. That's it. Now, on the other side of that, now... And it's not only the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. That is their interpretation. However, this goes back to the 12 tables, table 9 to the public law, which says laws of exception shall not be passed, ever. You cannot specialize a corporation. You cannot keep a corporation on corporate welfare. That's unlawful on its face, honey. No matter how crazy you are, that's unlawful on its face. And then Lincoln comes along and does just that with the 14th Amendment, and then the history books espouse him to be a hero of some sort. Right, and that, that's during the conflict with Congress. Congress said, oh, it's a great idea to make slavery legal for a while. We'll just make everybody hate each other and tell them they're doing it, and it's not us, Congress. You know, and um, so then they come back as, you know, oh, we're the good guys. We're going to make uh, slavery illegal now. Yep, we're going to save the day with the uh, tricky little yeah. 14th Amendment. But just before that, we're going to do an expatriation act so that all us attorneys can expatriate and repatriate under the bar so that we have our allegiance somewhere else. Not where humanity's allegiance is, but we're going to pay allegiance and pay homage to a fictional government, call it the bar, which is a perversion of the word. Now, the bar association is a trade. I don't see anybody paying taxes. Do you see anybody paying taxes, bar attorneys paying taxes? Bar associations paying taxes? Why, I don't know. What is their tax? Zero. Structure? Zero. Because they hide everything in what is known as IOLTA trusts. Right, those are IOLTAs. Right. Anyway, we're probably off topic now, but uh, there's a lot of accountability that needs to occur here. Um, numerous violations of the peace schedule on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it says right in the ordinance of the states that we are the United States. Every child that you harm is costing you 33 billion dollars each time you facilitate a harm against it one of our children. And that's our Constitution. We don't claim any of their constitutional rights. That's ridiculous on its face. Why would I want to submit myself to them and buy my rights back? I never gave them 
you know, with knowledge and intent to let them uh, take those rights from me in the first doggone place. Right. You know, another thing that I wanted to get done tonight, you don't feel like reading the genocide order, do you? No. Well, no. Well, we um, read that twice. We've read that twice or three times on the air. Uh, Right. We've well, we'll we got a lot of news to cover. Absolutely. But we'll just uh, point to it. You can find that over on Bono's Entertainment. And it's very important that all agents and attorneys, especially, read the genocide order out of the United States. Um, you know, that, that is under the public law. And, you know, bottom line, we offered your handlers the same opportunity, the same opportunity, and they did not want to adhere to the public law. Did you see that thing this week with, uh, out of the North Korean news network? I guess they're trafficking nationals in North oh, Korea. Oh, I sure did. Yeah, I did a report on it over last weekend um, from... Roughly Saturday to Monday, they were trafficking, was the word they used, uh, delegates in and out of uh, Pyongyang downtown, stopping traffic uh, at some points for 10 minutes at a time and um, getting these uh, old brown buses full of uh, delegates to their meeting, whatever that was about. Wasn't covered in the, you know, uh, a press release by North Korea other than NK News. Did we ever find out how many um, delegates they had been trafficked? They had been trafficking at that time. Well, it just depends on um, how many people the buses seat because there's between 100 and 150 buses estimated. And it was reporting a lot of those were double deckers. Yeah, there were some double deckers. Interesting. And so, yeah, you'd have to estimate. I estimate at least fifty, even with just fifty and a hundred buses. There's five thousand delegates. That is interesting. Maybe it's a new accident. Does does, does North Korea have five thousand delegates? You know, that's that's a lot well, of delegates. No, they're traveling. They're traveling from other areas. It said, and then they were being tra uh, trafficked. Not traffic, they weren't being, t I don't know how else to explain it, because they used the word traffic throughout the story. Um, I don't know, we'll get an update when we get an update, I guess. Any other news on, on Kim? You know what, he said um, this week as well that they were developing there at a really, really um, high rate of speed, building homes for, for uh, new campers or something it said. Yeah, they're developing um, some su suburb areas of Pyongyang, and uh, there was a story I read on the architecture going on there, and um, the future of uh, the um, architectural development, which um, it's been going nicely. Pyongyang looks like a beautiful city, lots of green. You know, you don't see that in... Uh, you know, American or British cities. Right, right. Lucky green. So, I don't know. Uh, despite whatever you may think out there of North Korea, they really know how to uh, make a nice looking city. And party. He's partying with uh, Rodman this last year. And I've seen him on lots and lots of photos with him at some kind of amusement park or something. It looks like he's got, uh, having a lot of fun. So we got all these things going on, like with the, uh, alleged beheading of the journalist by ISIS and... Yeah, I think the FBI was threatening the journalist there in, um, Ferguson, Missouri this week, and that, that was during that occurrence that a journalist happened to be off by the FBI over there in the Middle East. I think that they were trying to tell the journalist to shut up, but it was already out of the bag. The, the, the FBI evidenced itself 
to be killing children and then brought in more FBI agents to cover their tracks. Now, this is not the first time that this has occurred. Kendrick Johnson was another black victim of the FBI. Thomas Erbs was another victim of the FBI. Now, I don't know how much more evidence needs to occur before these attorneys stop trying to play the uh, starry diseases game or attorney work product doctrine facade or whatever else but you know under the public law court science incorporated does not exist there is no choreographer for any action under the public law it's always on the fly always as it comes and always head on it we don't play attorney games that's just uh, absolutely ridiculous on its face so with all that going on you see uh let's see uh, headlines are ramping up the fear factor isis is rapidly developing a method of blowing up a major u.s city in oklahoma senator uh Warns. Yes. As Hegel says, military must get ready for action. <laughs> yes, that was so beautiful this week. Do you realize who started that rumor? That was Rick Perry. Right after his indictment, Rick Perry came out and warned about, oh my gosh, ISIS might be coming across the border. Look over there. Look over there. Don't look at me under indictment. Don't investigate me. Look over there. I'm going to prove my innocence, and I'm going to start a campaign to show you what a good guy I am, and I'm um, starting my 2016 campaign. This is all political, uh, just political backlash on me. I'm innocent. Yeah. That, it was that, it was that uh, uh, prosecuting attorney w was driving drunk. That's, the, that's what the problem is. Right. And that's not a violation of the public law. That's a commercial oh, crime. Oh, no. Yeah, he came out in the video today, and, yeah, he was running a commercial for commercial crimes because he said thank god they caught her before she might have harmed somebody absolutely there's no such thing as might have or just in case or thought crimes or any other of this crap that attorneys like to play with and argue evidence is evidence evidence is evidence so also then while this is going on uh Leisure activities are good for uh, Obama and Kerry as uh, Obama plays more golf and John Kerry goes sailing. See, people, that's what they, uh, Where are that's they? the level of concern that they have. Where are they? Where Who? are they? The, the, what are they? The, 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 the upper administration. Where, where is the, this government that everybody uh, wants to rely on during these crisis times when everybody's being slaughtered? Where where are these government faces well, that say they love you? So they're just they're just telling you that everything's going well as far as they're concerned. So might as well go golfing and sailing. Sick business as usual. Dead kids everywhere. Business as usual. Might as well go golfing. The White House suggested Friday that President Barack Obama was trying to work out his tensions when he played 18 holes of golf on Wednesday, complete with grins and fist bumps. That's just sick. Immediately after delivering a brief but moving speech condemning the gruesome execution of American photojournalist James Foley. Yeah, that was his FBI that did that. Sports and leisure activities are a good way for release and clearing of the mind for a lot of us. Deputy White House Press Secretary Eric Schultz told reporters in a makeshift briefing room on Martha's Vineyard where Obama is on a two-week vacation. Later, a picture emerged of John Kerry sailing in Nantucket. Sick. Shit. So, it's all going good as far as they're concerned, so... How can what does that tell you on your face? How can anybody patronize that one? I mean, what it says on his face is that, you know, they're good with it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, you know, when I uh, put that mechanical heart and and uh, and Cheney, you know, and most people get really depressed, you know, because it's not a natural heartbeat, you know, it's just a constant uh, flow, and uh, you know, some people just get get depressed where they they can't handle it. it. Didn't bother Cheney one bit, you know. He's used to being a robot. Absolutely. 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. He shot his own friend in the face. He was trying to off that guy and pretended it was an accident. Who has such an accident? Only attorneys. Well, I think, yeah, I think Cheney should have more, you know, sport hunting up outings, invite more people. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe Rick Perry would go with him. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot of dirt on each other. Holy crap, they don't want to hunt with each other. Not now. Not a, Now it's not a good time to go quail hunting. Let's see, the ISIS five-point plan to getting around suspension of social media accounts, get on Russian version of Facebook, avoid YouTube, and hack Western TV channels. Yeah. More screaming. Don't don't watch the news now. No, wait. Watch the news. Members are planning to infiltrate other social networks after having their Twitter and YouTube accounts suspended for repeatedly sharing the video of the murder of U.S. journalist James Foley. Yeah, no, that's, that's, not, a, that's that, more espionage there. Absolutely, because that video is the truth. It doesn't matter if it's hard to see, it's still the truth. It's not to be censored, and I'm sorry. Human beings are always with empathy. Seeing another human being slaughtered is very, very sad. But this is the truth. It is not to be censored. Google is violating the public law. At any given moment in time, by by erasing congressional actions and other criminal behaviors, based on the order of what court? How about these names are coming up for uh, Emmanuel Goldstein? For anybody familiar with the 1984, uh, the book reference, uh, this guy that beheaded this guy. Uh, I guess they're calling him Jihadi John, Jihadi John, and then there's Al Baghdadi. <laughs> it's just sick. And she right? just call him all Emmanuel Goldstein and say, you know, that, yeah, it's another Emmanuel Goldstein because that's what it is. Yeah, they're just FBI agents, and and every once in a while you get an FBI informant because the FBI has information against that informant and can force it to do what it wants it to do. It's holding stuff over their heads or whatever else. And the FBI said that this year. It came out and just a couple months ago, she said, look, you know, we, we hold stuff over informant's head to get what we want. Okay. Uh, that's unlawful on its face. Now, Mr. Perry there, he's charged with the same thing, criminal coercion. He threatened to take away funds to investigate himself and then went on a campaign to vilify the prosecuting attorney that was adhering to the public law. How's that working out for everybody? How's it working out for them both? Ex-Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell says he knows he's innocent of corruption charges, but should have disclosed gifts. Oh. Former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell says he knows in his heart he's innocent of the federal corruption charges he's facing. They are foul. They, they are both under indictment, and those two have turned on each other like you wouldn't believe. And, and all of this is very subtle and very... Oh, it's just the whole thing is foul. Him and his wife have just gone nuts. And, and he says now that he was trying to keep up with his wife's wants and needs. And so he was allowing things to occur. So he's blaming her for what he does. But, now this is the kicker. All of the natural males that I know, every single natural male, would not commit a crime to please her anyway. Now, I know a lot of natural males that have been exposed to psychopathic females, and there's a, there's a line in the sand there where he's not going to violate the public law under any circumstance. And at that point in time is usually when he's falsely accused of criminal crime because he's not working with the state through her.
Right, that's a McDonald. All of them. All of the males do that all the time. You know, Eve is like the most vicious thing in the garden. She's contracting with the with the snake there, and then you know, if you happen upon um, Delilah, that's she's even more horrifying. She's the one that feeds them all. The, the information that the judges want against you. I mean, there's different levels of bile, apparently, according to the Bible, anyway, and in and, and my own experience, experiencing these things in this garden that's not supposed to have those things in it. Well, the Daily Mail says, Congratulations to proud Game of Thrones actress, Macy Williams, after she passes her driving test, first time around. So there, there we go. There, there we go. There's another uh, star subscribing themselves once again yeah. to the. Yeah, she uh, made a lot of money, and now they're gonna suck it out of her because she registered with the state. Don't register, and get rid of your agent. Your agent should not be your pimp. If you are an actress, you're going to be noticed. It's the same thing as a singer or uh, any other entertainer. You're going to be noticed. You don't need an agent. Those, those are scouts. They're called scouts for a reason. They are hunters. Those are the predators of actors. Now, they're probably contracted already with the state to the Actors Guild. Right. You've got to get rid of your agents and things like that and don't register because that, that leaves you out for grabs. Don't go out for grabs. Look at who's that one that they've really been hammering on? Justin Bieber. They just hammered on him and Miley Cyrus. They're turning her into just this this little tart because she's trying to get better and better ratings, and they're telling her, "No, if you if you're a good girl, you're not going to get the ratings, right?" So she's following the ratings. However, when she started out, her boys got her there. And it's the same thing with any of these other actors and actresses and singers. You have the ability. You don't need an agent hunting you or taking a share of your productivity and all these things. This is the the, the attorneys pervert everything. Everything. Now well, let's see here what else we got going here. Uh, I have trouble keeping my wong straight, Senator Reid said, and he apologizes after cracking jokes about Asians while speaking to an Asian group. He's a racist. <laughs> I don't care if he apologizes. He was already evidence to be racist. It just slipped out. Well, you know what? It's just more evidence right there. The Congress is the racist. Congress is the one that promotes it. Absolutely. So they cash in off of it. And, and those words would never accidentally slip out of your mouth because you don't think like that. Humanity does not think like that. Senator Reid just evidenced that he's a racist. If you accept his apology, you should be slapped. Don't accept his apology. Move forward. He's a racist. Get him out of your communities. Move him over to North Korea. Birds of a, of, a, of a feather run amok together. Uh, let's see. You, you know, you know, Shriver, who was, uh, you know, she's from the Kennedy family. Right. She was married to uh, Schwarzenegger. Right. Now they've been separated since 2011. Now she's um, uh, her new boyfriend um, is Matthew Dowd. Uh, is an all-star political consultant with a series of political accomplishments, a family, and a history of personal heartbreak that nearly rivals the Kennedys here. Um, so she's, she's got her own, she's marrying her own PR corporation. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So Maria Shriver wants good publicity well, why is that? Is she about to tear um, Schwarzenegger for a new one? She's trying to clean up her image. 
Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder what's her, in her closet if she's trying to clean up her image by marrying a PR. Wow. Yeah, apparently, uh, let's see, well, the headline reads, two divorces, a baby girl who died, and a hundred crosses in his Texas home meet the former Bush advisor who's been dating Maria Shriver for the past year. Aw, and he's being used to, to say, look, he's Christian, and she's Christian because she's marrying him. She's not vicious or anything. Th those folks aren't vicious, they're Christian. Hundred crosses in the home of Texas signifies that they're conservative and Republican. You know how it goes. That's an illusion. Court science incorporated, choreography. It should be stamped on the bottom of these documents. And it's not. Mystery employee at EPA's Denver office smears human waste and menstrual blood on the walls, clogs toilets and urinates on floor. The new report reveals that the bathroom problems were even more prevalent than previously thought. And while the incidents appear to have stopped, the perpetrator was never caught. You know, Mark, can you read that one in depth? Because that one was very, very interesting. Because the headline doesn't say so much that it was a federal employee or that it's possibly like three or four federal employees that are smearing... Uh, feces and things and doing yucky gross it sounds like a fetish or a group or a gang of of um, practitioners of those uh, what is that called a scat fetish or something and, and those are paraphilia folks and and within the um, usual diagnosis of psychopathy paraphilias go hand in hand with psychopathy usually um, you know, there's some things like sadomasochism that has been taught to you by the church. You're actually taught to be a weeping boy by churches. And so S&M is not like within psychopathy. That's the introduced, um, you must be the martyr, you must be the, the whipping boy for Congress teachings. And that's what the church teaches. It teaches you that you're the sinner. And that Congress is, is the Lord God. And there's nothing farther from the truth. Well, let's see. It basically says, uh, let's see, the bullet points are federal employee responsible for the beyond gross behavior has not been caught. EPA has asked Homeland Security for protection in its Denver office. EPA? Is, oh, they're doing a presentation. So and the that, EPA wants protection? No. Well, they've, yeah, they've asked Homeland Security for protection, right. Holy cow, so, so they're at fault for something. Somebody's acting out. A mystery EPA employee in Denver seems more intent on spreading toxic waste and cleaning it up. The agency has received more than a dozen reports of beyond gross behavior in its Denver office, including a woman who has been smearing menstrual blood and human feces on the walls. Is she crying out for help? Is that like a distress signal? Other reports include a trail of human waste leading out in the hallway near the men's bathroom, an employee who urinated on the toilet seat and floor of the bathroom, and another employee who defecated outside the building when he was locked out. No, oh, that truly does sound like psychopathy, doesn't it? I wonder why they'd be doing that. No. Uh... I wonder if the EPA is under fire criminally for something and they're trying to put on a really good uh, show and, and say they have a crazy employee that works there. And it must have been the crazy employee that was rubbing feces all over. In June, a memo from the Deputy Regional Administrator Howard Cantor was re released publicly that revealed the Denver office of the EPA was beset by an employee who was clogging toilets and putting human waste on the floor outside the bathroom. A new report from Environmental Policy Newsletter, Greenwire, reveals that bathroom problems were even more prevalent than previously thought and while the incidents appear to have stopped, the perpetrator was never caught. Now the Environmental Protection Agency is calling in the Department of Homeland Security to protect employees from the contamination in the office. In emails obtained from, uh, by Greenwire employees report being terrified 
by the perpetrator in fear she could become violent. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they're, they're creating a fall guy. It sounds like they're creating a fall guy. That would be beautiful. Homeland Security's Federal Protective Service, which provides security for federal offices, has stepped up patrols. The EPA has also brought in a work place violence consultation and increased its own security at the office. Right, they're posturing for the other workers. They're telling the other workers about the crazy employee that used to wipe shit all over the walls. They do that often. They do that in Islam. With um, the attorneys who come in and said that uh, Islamic uh, men were burning their widows after death, right? They never did such things. A dead guy can't burn his wife. Only an attorney can burn his wife after death. And, and it was to prevent inheritance. And this is the, um, this is funny. They're posturing somebody for, for, you know, fall guy. The male supervisor told her that management knows that it is a female <laughs> on the redacted, uh, on the floor who has been <coughs> wiping feces and menstrual blood on the walls. I'm really sorry this is beyond gross and that they're worried about that her uh, behavior is escalating, according to one email obtained by Green Wire. Well, why can't they just run DNA? It's menstrual blood. I mean, it comes out of her. Um, yeah. Can't well, be maybe they are. Yeah, and it can't be a male form, so, uh, you know, males don't normally menstruate ever. Let's see, another email reported the incidents of urine on the seats and the floors are still occurring regularly in the women's restrooms. However, they're, they are no longer limited to the sixth and seventh floors. Employees are now reporting incidents more frequently. <laughs> it could be many crazy people. <laughs> That's an interesting story. We'll have to keep everybody updated on it. That's crazy. Another employee sent a picture of an overflowing toilet to bosses. Another email, an employee told bosses, I can think of two people right off the bat that should be checked out. <laughs> One who, under the context of emergency, defecated outside the building when precluded from coming into the uh, building prior to 5.30 a.m. This is crazy. The incidents have led some employees to fear the perpetrator could become violent and even commit a workplace shooting. Well, yeah, you have people that are that crazy to crap outside working there. My goodness, it's all a hostile work environment. <laughs> They're psychopathic. Employees have reported one co-worker who was found with ammunition. Another was reported to uh, printed off specifications for a rifle in that's the office. Just, that's sick. Come on. There's crazy people working there. Where is this? The Environmental Protection Agency? Yeah, EPA building downtown Denver. How do they hire their employees? They, they, they all sound crazy. And they, they all know who did it? This is crazy. The EPA, I, I would love to see their uh, criteria, their hiring criteria. That's nuts. Yeah. So, let's see here. We've got that uh, Chinese fighter jet that um, did, did a uh, Top Gun style barrel roll over a U.S. jet. And what the Pentagon has slammed is a very dangerous and... Uh, aggressive thing. Yes, he didn't do anything, anybody. He was flying. They were flying. And now the White House, because they're under fire for racism and everything else is going on, they're trying to promote humanity into fear by saying a Chinese blah, 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 or a Mexican blah, blah, blah. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Well, it is kind of a dangerous thing, but I mean, it's the kind of thing that military pilots do all the time. Right. Plane. Uh, well, let's see. Nobody was harmed. It's just the Pentagon trying to promote fear. Yeah, there's a whole lot of that going on right now. That's for sure. I mean, you got to be afraid of uh, something here, um, folks here. Don't pay attention to... Um, you know, Sick Perry getting uh, indicted here. Um, you know, Rick Perry traded as the general counsel 
and the Department of Health and Human Services, by the way, on Dun and Brad Street, if you look them up in Texas. Yeah, he was on the genocide order. So, but. We went out to the Office of Population. Doesn't bother him one bit, you know, it kind of reminds me of that guy that got out of jail and said he's going to run for Congress. Absolutely, and, and people used to accept that kind of thing before they realized that it was Congress who was killing them and rendering them and, and burning them alive in their prisons. Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, well, I've got. Um, you wanted to cover this one about this Kentucky firefighter critical after ice bucket challenge mishap. Now, this ice bucket challenge in itself probably is something that yeah, it's maybe a, needs to be looked at. But this absolutely. comes from routers. The founders keep getting whacked. And it's coincidentally uh, accidental means. Three in a row, back to back, have been found dead lately. Yeah, that's right. Where's that money going? Uh, let's see, in this one here, so a Kentucky firefighter was in critical condition Friday, day after he and three others were injured when an aerial ladder got too close to a power line when the department doused a university ban with water in an ice bucket fundraiser. Captain Tony Greider... 41 and firefighter Simon Quinn, 22, from the Campsville Fire Department, sustained electrocution injuries Thursday morning in a ladder bucket, and two other firefighters were hurt coming to the raid. Greider was listed in critical condition Friday as University of Louisville Hospital, and Quinn as stable. No, in that article that I was reading, it said the power line was above him. And he tipped the water bucket over on this band, right? And it created an arc of electricity that electrocuted him. Is that even possible? I thought those wires were insulated. Well, I mean, depending on the voltage, it doesn't, you know, make a lot of difference if it's insulated or not, if it's high voltage. So it can create an arc at that level? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Water itself is an insulator, but you got to remember that there's a lot of uh, free-floating contaminants in water that do conduct electricity, minerals, and things. How would you make it safer for firefighters and, and overall? We need to make it safer so that these things don't occur any longer. Well, the whole ice bucket challenge thing may be, you know, something to look at. Uh, why are they putting people's... Uh, people in harm's way for uh, raising money, raising funds. Right. Is there a safer way of, of uh, conveying electricity? Uh, well, um, I'm sure there is. It, something that's really not uh, uh, boned up enough to talk about at the moment. But. I'll have to research it and find out. That sounds like... I mean, it looks like he was just, they were having fun, and, and he was he was not near, near the power line. He was well below it, but what had occurred is it caused an arc of electricity that electrocuted him. Yeah, it traveled down the extended ladder. So, you know, the ladder is probably metal, okay, and you're going to conduct electricity. Uh talk about some of these other horrible attorneys out there. Uh, this is from August 21st, Corpus Christi, Texas. A local attorney already facing three felony charges is booked on one more. Texas Rangers arrested Paul Andrews Wednesday for allegedly hiring a hitman to off a key witness. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this in my career, says Bexer. County Prosecutor Cliff Herberg, Andrews' most recently, uh, his most recent arrest stems from his first one in June. It marks the fourth felony charge for the Gold's law firm attorney this summer. The Bexar County District Attorney's Office was tipped off by a man about Andrews' alleged plan last week. We were contacted by an informant who praised us of the situation, and we got... Texas Rangers involved. 
In a press release sent to Action 10 News, the DA's office said they'd received information from an informant to the effect that Andrews had discussed with him his desire to have Baratry witness. So, so, so they wanted he wanted to have this Baratry witness eliminated. Absolutely, because that was he's under indictment for Baratry. He's under indictment for being a pirate, and he's trying to whack other pirates. That's an interesting one. An official told uh, an official source told Action Ten News that the intended target was Mary Ann Uribe, a key witness against Andrews in his Baratry case. Investigators set up a meeting between the informant and Andrews. At that meeting, Andrews confirmed he wanted the witness killed. Wow. Andrews now is charged with a felony for allegedly hiring a hitman. He's his bond set Thursday morning at a million dollars while well, Andrews was arrested in Nusisa's County. He will be tried in Bexar County. Wow. That guy's vile. Icky. He's, yeah. He's already icky. That's just how they roll. It, it hasn't even been a month since that one in Michigan did the same thing. It, it was trying to hire a hitman to whack another attorney, too. They're absolutely vile. They don't even like each other. Yeah, let's see. Um, got another one here. Uh, you remember, of course, we put that $250,000 bounty down in the oh, yeah. uh, genocide order. That's one of my favorite parts. Uh, so let's get into this one here. If I can get that web page to open here. This is from loha.com and headline reads, Zamy's lawyer accused of bribing witnesses. Okay. Wow. That used to be common practice. Galgano surrendered this morning at the Carmel police station. See, bribing witnesses is the same action as what is known as informants. If the FBI pays a witness, that's called bribery. Okay? It's always bribery. Except for the FBI calls it FBI and informant. That informant is always a witness, and it's always being paid off. It's, it's Court Science Incorporated. It's part of the choreography. So this one here um, reads, Carmel, Westchester County Attorney George Galgano was charged Thursday with witness tampering and bribery in a case connected to the sex charges against his client, Mahopic rest uh restauranter Lenny Areno Zany. He's protecting a pedophile? Sick. Calgano, forty one, surrendered to Carmel Police on Thursday morning. He was arraigned Thursday afternoon in Putnam County Court, where a judge set bail at a hundred thousand dollars. Gugano also must surrender a shotgun. Police found at his home. He posted bail and was released by six PM. Bribery and witness tampering charges are felonies. Galgano also faces misdemeanor conspiracy charges. The charges are tied to his dealings with the woman who claimed Zamy sexually assaulted her in 2012 and again this year. Galgano was <laughs> indicted with three co conspirators, including uh, one who was not named. Uh, let's see here. That's not. Uh, that's not according to the public law either. Um, Absolutely. Not naming. Well, it, it might be a bigger hit. Every once in a while, you're going to find somebody that can't be named because they're in protective custody. And they have more information on the other uh, co conspirators. So law enforcement is protecting that other one that's going to talk about the other one usually. And so you want that one that's protected. I mean, it's, it's just. 
save her because the other guys are meaner than that one usually. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, but somebody's got to be protected because otherwise they just kill each other and nobody knows any, any information or any evidence, you know. Okay. Uh, Assistant District Attorney Andres Gill is asking for in asking for $250,000 cash bail told visiting Westchester County Judge David Zuckerman that authorities intercepted a message in which Gill claimed Galgano threatened to shoot a Putnam Assistant District Attorney. Right. Yeah, he doesn't want to be prosecuted. There's no threatening anybody. That's not good. I take that very seriously, Putnam County District Attorney Adam Levy said. Gill said authorities also intercepted a text in which he claimed Galgano said he was going to knock off a gas station. Galgano laughed and rolled his eyes at those accounts, which were not included in the indictment. The rest comes less than two weeks after Galgano filed a $130 million lawsuit against Levy and Carmel Police, alleging they violated Zamey's constitutional rights with his 2013 arrest for rape. Oh my goodness. He's trying to say they violated his rights when they stopped a rapist? What the heck? He needs <laughs> no. to be put away for a long time. No, uh, you can't. I got oh. constitutional rights. You can't just arrest That's me. That's just uh, sick. That's sick. Absolutely sick. Galgano's, Galgano's lawyer, Robert Al Chiller, said Levy is investigating Galgano because he was about to prove that prosecutors knew the woman who claimed Zamey assaulted her in 2012. And this January was lying. Levy is investigating George Galgano because he was investigating them and he was getting close, said Al Chiller, who entered a not guilty plea for his client. Levy dismissed the suggestion. I don't blame Mr. Galgano's lawyer for making those statements, Levy said at a news conference after the arraignment. If I were Mr. Galgano's lawyer, I'd be making any statement I could to deflect the attention and focus away from my client. Yeah, but it sounds like they, it could be a setup. She could be an agent. I mean, you'd have to go look in the broker account. Find out if she's got one of those broker accounts and if she's a paid agent. They're all yeah. listed. They're all listed. Uh, Carmel and State Police searched Galgano's Greenberg office and purchased home in early July as part of the ongoing witness tampering probe. Police said they found drugs in the office and charged Galgano and an associate with felony possession. Well, Chiller would not comment on the drug charges because he's not defending Galgano against them. Galgano is representing Zamey, 44, in the 2013 rape case as that case was going on trial earlier this year. It ended in mistrial. Carmel police filed the new charges against Zamey involving a second witness uh, or second waitress. The second case went to grand jury, which indicted Zamey on two misdemeanors. Right, so there's re repetition. We, we need to see the evidence, though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I told her said Galgano's office had been investigating the second claim and had a recording that proved that the woman lied. He said the witness tampering investigation was a pretense to search the office, but claimed authorities were really looking for the recording. Police seized it along with 14 computers, two cell phones, and two other items. The recording shows the second waitress made a false complaint and that the Putnam County District's Attorney Office was involved in making a false claim. Wow. Galgano maintained in court recently. The two named co-conspirators, Putnam uh, residents Quincy McQuaid, 37, and Leah LaRosso, 41, who is related to the second victim, are charged with witness tampering, witness intimidation and bribery, felonies, and conspiracy and misdemeanor. I need to see the evidence. I mean, we can talk about recordings all day long, but it doesn't give me the evidence. Logano hired McQuaid and Rigoso to assist in his investigation of the second waitress. Al Chiller denies any of them broke the law. The case is a total fabrication, he said. McQuaid and Rigoso have been held at the Putnam County Jail since their June 30 arrest by Carmel Police. Well, see, and he claimed his constitutional rights to be able to rape, right? I mean, he claimed he he wanted his constitutional rights to enable rape. So he's 
evidencing that he's a rapist. He likes that. He believes that's his right. Felony complaint alleges they offered the woman money not to testify, sent her many phone and text messages, and scared her into thinking she would be physically injured by Albanians. So Amy is from Albania. Well, again, I would need to see the evidence because the FBI is good at finding stuff on cell phones and uh, other things as uh, evidence in the media this year. FBI came out and where was that? In India, they were saying, well, we plant stuff on. Remember, you did a report on that one. Yes, right. That's how they roll. Right. I would need to see evidence. But the, the scales are kind of tipped over into not the rapist's favor, favor because he was trying to claim that he was protected by the Constitution to be a rapist. Who does that? Only a rapist would scream for their rights under the Constitution. You're not protected to rape anybody. That's just sick. It's perverted to even have that thought and, and claim a right under the Constitution to harm anybody. How absolute... It's ludicrous. Yeah, it amounts to more attorney work product doctrine. They use the Constitution when, when Absolutely. it's advantageous to it, it's them. It's like the attorneys themselves, you know. Oh, abortion isn't murder. It's a new word, and we're going to use that, and then I'll define where life comes from and where life starts and ends and everything else, and we'll just call this one abortion. No, wait a second. Y you, you. It's absolutely murder. There's no such thing as is halfway killing somebody. Insane. Attorneys are absolutely insane. Without a doubt. Thankfully, Kim Jong Un is there with his arms out. He's good with infants. Uh, let's see here. Indiana judge apologizes for remarks some found offensive. They're usually offensive. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, a northeastern Indiana judge is apologizing for saying during a retirement reception that one of the women, one of the women, could have a lucrative second career as a phone sex operator. Oh my goodness, that's offensive. That's horrible. Allen Superior Court Judge Stanley Levine used a microphone to make the comment Friday at an event attended by family, friends, and co-workers and some children. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> It's absolutely disgusting. Levine told the Journal Gazette he has apologized to the woman for his inappropriate remarks. Doesn't matter. And he, to the judges and other pre others pre present. He made her a prostitute when he called her a prostitute. How's that for attorney work product doctrine? And then, and then I said, I'm sorry, so it's okay, right? But he made her one because now she had to sue him. And then, right? And, you know, He's setting it up. I mean, this is sick. In an email Wednesday to the courthouse staff, the Allen County Board of Judges said they found Levine's comments to be inappropriate and that some people found his comments offensive. Absolutely. The, the email reminded all courthouse staff that anyone who feels he or she has been harassed has the option to report to conduct. Absolutely. See so that? So they're opening up yep. the door there. Opening up the Come door. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in here. Get your rights here. Uh, Absolutely. You work at the courthouse we got special rights for you they, they need to do that commercial you know how they say um have you been injured in a car accident has your ego been been uh, injured has somebody violated your ego and touched you there inappropriately this is <laughs> they need to do concept commercials in north korea somebody violated your ego yes uh, let's see, more Indiana news. State Health Commissioner announces resignation. Saw that one. That one is interesting. After a year and a half. Interesting. Uh, let's see. He announces plans to resign um, just today. After a little more than a year and a half on the job, State Health Commissioner Dr. William Van Ness released a statement Friday saying he planned to leave the post in early October strictly for personal reasons. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, everybody else is being held accountable. I might as well support the door here before everybody starts trampling over me. It has been an honor and a pleasure to serve the great citizens of Indiana in my role <laughs> as state health commissioner over the past year and a half. Absolutely. Van Ness said in the release, <laughs> is with regret and strictly for personal reasons that I've submitted my resignation. Absolutely. I'm going to slip out the door here before you notice what's going on. He served since January 14, 2013, when he was appointed by Governor Mike Pence. He previously served as a member of the executive board for the Indiana State Department of Health and as a president and CEO of the Community Hospital of Anderson in Madison County from 1997 to 2013. Absolutely. He hears that train coming, coming <laughs> round the bend. <laughs> I ain't seen the sunshine <laughs> since I don't know when. <laughs> In the release, door. Oh my goodness. Ben Ness said he planned to assist Pence until he finds a suitable replacement. A dedicated employee at the Indiana State Department of Health have done a tremendous job of promoting a, and providing essential public health services for Hoosiers, and I have every confidence they will continue to serve the state to the best of their abilities during this transition and after, Ben Ness said. <laughs> transition. It's more like fun with Dick and Jane. I wonder who the new Dick is. Yes. Well, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, and, and you know, it, it wouldn't be so bad if attorneys didn't flaunt all this stuff. You know, like. Uh, <laughs> the cannibalism, there's nothing I mean, they better. drive they drive around in these nice cars. I saw this one. Uh, this very nice black Mercedes one time, and, uh, you know, attorney-looking fellow getting out of the car pumping gas one time at a uh, total gas station, and uh, his his license plate said Barrister. Yes, yes, they just, they, they advertise it all over. We're the good guys. They're all politicians. We're nice, we're nice. They're nice. That guy slipped right out the door, though. That was a tricky job there. He's getting on out of there and retiring early. Gotta go down. Hey, the judge did that to us last year, remember? The one that uh, admitted that he was human trafficking on the air. Judge Naidu or whatever that guy called himself. Right. Was interesting. Right. Gotta go on out. Yeah. I'm yeah, didn't 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 we prearrange that uh, with the call and say, yeah, we had a two hour, hour we had a two hour show we'd like you to be on and, yep. and he's like, he was all good with that, but uh, forty five minutes into that and he was out of there. Yeah, he had to get out of the door really quickly. He, he all of a sudden he had dinner ready or something. Absolutely, he remembered a prior engagement that he didn't know about till that second. Oh, goodness. So what else we got? They're all the same. They, they have these uh, characteristics that never change. They all look alike. Same modus operandi. Now, of course, there's been all this, uh, there's been a lot of news about, you know, people have been leaving their dogs in the car, kids in the car, in the hot summer here, uh, and I've got one here on a police officer who left his canine dog in the car for six hours, killed the dog. Well, it is lawful under the public law to break a window to save a life. So the canine, um, this is from One News Junkie. Um, and he's dead after officers leave dog in the hot car for six hours with windows up. So, it's this it's officer. Terrible. So, uh, a Mills police officer is accused of leaving his canine dog in a police vehicle for over six hours with no air conditioning, ventilation, or water. As a result, as a result of those six hours in the heat, the animal was found dead in the patrol vehicle. It's terrible. According to an affidavit obtained from the Natronas County uh, circuit court, the dog was canine Nix, and he was in custody of Officer Zachary Lee Miller of the Mills Police. Terrible. 
Yeah. And it could have been an accident. We don't know the situation. Um, I know that that sounds hard to believe, but, you know, these things could occur. Yeah, it was 86 degrees out, you know, and it quickly gets to 100 without any windows open and the uh, windows amplifying the sunlight. Uh, the car was parked in direct view of a security camera at the police station, which cap captured officers Zachary Lee Miller and Jake Bigelow leaving the dog in the vehicle. Aww. Miller is the senior officer who was responsible for the dog, but he has put the blame on Bigelow, his trainee. Aww. Miller said that he yelled at Bigelow for not turning the air conditioner on, but the fact still remains that the dog was in the car for six hours unattended without any water. And how can air conditioner be turned on unless the car is running for six hours? Both officers are still employed with the Mills Police Department, although Miller is apparently on leave as a result of unrelated personal reasons. Miller has pleaded not guilty to a misdemeanor animal cruelty charges and is scheduled... Well, wait a second, because they consider those officers. Canine officers have always had the same importance as an officer. Oh, you why? betcha. When a citizen um, attacks a canine. Absolutely. So why is it animal cruelty when a cop kills a dog and and uh, assaults an officer if, uh, if a citizen did? We're not going to play double standards. That's here. a good point there. That is a double standard. Very good point. Uh, but he's... Um, Scheduled to appear in court soon, um, and see, also, uh, side note, just two months ago, an Indiana police officer was caught on tape beating his canine dog. That was horrifying. So. And that's, again, assault on an officer. Always, not beating his dog. That's an officer. He's always been considered an officer. He puts his life on the line as any other officer. Nobody's going to cash in on killing canine units. That is not a new market condition for attorneys to take advantage of. You are not going to do this and you're not going to get away with it. That corporate counsel, those corporate counsel attorneys need to uh, be investigated because it looks like they're cashing in on the officer's diagnosis. So that, that wouldn't, I want further investigation on to uh, find out what's going on now. This one here came out, um, and I don't, I don't like to cater to the law merchant, but uh, a video, uh, and the headline reads, Whistleblower Leaks Disturbing Video of Illegal Assault and Arrest of Family Court Litigant Ordered by Judge Matthew J. Gary. Now, uh, this one is... Uh, Where is that from? Let's see. Uh, judge Pro Tem Misconduct. Temporary Judge Richard Soko and Elaine Van... Beverin failed to report and help cover up Judge Matthew Gary misconduct. So these two attorneys that were sitting right there, right, they, they're required to report this. Right. This game they've been playing for a lot of years. So this is a CIA presentation. The two attorneys are blaming the judge, but the judge is also an attorney. We're not going to play the good attorney, bad attorney game because there's no such thing as a good attorney. And again, NPR reported on this just last week and said there is no such thing as a good psychopath. There is no such thing as a good psychopath. So we're not going to go back into court and say, well, the judge did this. He did it more. No, and, and this is what they've been playing for a long time. This sounds like another uh, CIA promotion or FBI promotion. Um, Barbara Johnson does this all the time. The attorney, Barbara Johnson, uh, she uh, points a finger over at judges and causes a big stink and writes books. And, and um, this attorney is always blaming judges. And she says she's a former bar card holder, but her oath never went away, and she calls herself an attorney at law, 
So that in itself was a show. Um, I, I originally ran into Babs there from falseallegations.com way, way back when, you know, there was no help for men who had been falsely accused of rape, domestic violence, and all of these other uh, conjured up aspects of consensus reality sold upon the populace. And um, she's been using human beings for a very long time, human trafficking as an attorney, and she's she raked it in for quite a number of years, and now she presents as a false flag. She's always pointing her fingers over at the judges when everybody's an attorney. Well, we evidence that in my case. Um, and I wasn't going to play the uh, good attorney, bad attorney side of this. What um, stuck out in my mind here uh, is um, just the level of subjugation by these uh, creeps in black dresses. Um, and, and then this happens to be in a family court setting, okay, which is probably, you know, you just, 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 you know, step up above uh, IRS court, you know, I mean, they're all horrible, but uh, family court's got to be like one of the worst. Right. Uh, they bifurcate the case, and they do source all sorts of unlawful stuff, and you know, they've justified that with their attorney work product doctrine. Right. Uh, you know, separating out the, uh, the custody from the uh, material Divorce possessions. The and, and yeah. They play all of these games. When in reality, she usually took off with an FBI agent, and she's out the door, and she wants all this stuff. And, and there's, there's no cause to go against the mail. So, so the startling <laughs> courthouse security video leaked by a government whistleblower records the illegal 2009 assault and arrest of indigent, uh, disabled pro per litigant in family court reform activist Robert Saunders. During a March 9, 2009 court hearing, Judge Matthew Gary ordered the self-represented Saunders arrested and jailed for contempt of court. Right. Two outside independent judges who later reviewed the incident determined that both the contempt charge and arrest were illegal. Right. Now stop right there. Now what they did was they arrested him and then later they found out, oh, that it was illegal for us to do that. We're sorry. We're sorry. No, wait a second. What happened in between there? Because when you arrested him, and therefore he wasn't working, and therefore he wasn't paying alimony, or therefore he wasn't paying child support, therefore he was already under contempt for this, and criminalization for this, and he got behind on his child support, so the FBI got involved because he was 10 the grand in arrears, and he lost the house, and a foreclosure occurred, and all of these tactical plays played out all around him within the action of low-intensity conflict within fourth-generation warfare. Okay, now this whole article is filled with lit litigation and indoctrination. They're trying they're, to help people. Right. They're, 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 on one, yeah. I want, you know, major part of it here is selling the whole idea of the law merchant and that, oh, yeah, uh, our, our courts are corrupt. We're going to fix it for you, you right. know, and that was it's going to be good again. Yeah, that was illegal back then. And then the next time it was illegal, too. Oh, darn the luck, that was illegal, too. And at the end of it, he walks away with the shirt on his back living in his car. It's the same story over and over again. This is a court. Science is incorporated. It's an orchestrated process. And everything that occurred upon him was already, it was it was a screenplay, a screenwriting. But, but apparently, um, you know, um, you know, this, this Gary has a history of uh, just, just um, you know, uh, being against this uh, fee waiver law, you know, against, uh, you know, um, an indigent and unrepresented domestic violence right. victim. Right, because uh, what was happening, now he's claiming his rights under the domestic violence law. So they're selling everybody constitutional rights. Sure females they are. Sure females they are. get those rights. I want my rights too. I want my rights. Hold on a second. This started out when your psychopath left you and she wanted all your stuff. 
Anyways, this guy has um, Gary uh, documented history of bias and abuse of authority. But, you know, I mean, they're just the one they're putting up there to throw the rotten tomatoes at because they all are. Yeah, that's that's the everyday core process. That's business. Right. Under the, the uh, 1789 Act. Judiciary Act, again, right. for our new listeners, um, these courts are created as places of business. In Article 3 of that, you can see uh, the routing system. Right. Now, I can, I can tell all of our listeners out there, there's one thing that's always a guarantee. At the inception of every divorce, one party will be told by their attorney not to show up on one day. And that's when everything happens. The attorney, without any documentation to hand you, will say not to show up on one day. Well, everybody else shows up and accidentally de determines your fate for the rest of your life on that day. And you spend the next 18 or so years fighting because of that day. That day is a guaranteed occurrence. That day is choreographed. That day is the day that the attorneys began the rest of your life as Job. It was that day. And the day that you went into court and petitioned somebody else to determine your marriage. When in reality the evidence says, well, she ran off with an FBI agent. She moved to another state. She attempted to falsely accuse me of domestic violence or whatever when she got there in order to keep them there, keep my children there and away from me, that's not a rarity. They've taught you the doctrine of chivalry and all of these different things don't talk about that. That's shameful. What's shameful? What did you do wrong? Nothing. Your psychopathic soon-to-be ex-wife just kidnapped your kids at the behest of the state she works for. And you are about to pay money to rent Caesar's kid. So rather than doing that, you want to come in from the top and say, no, nope, wait, that's human trafficking. Wait a minute here, that is genocide. We're not going to be arguing for our rights to be abused in any way, shape, or form. We're going to come in and, and show you that your court absolutely has no standing and that your FBI agents are merely Stasi, and you're trying to sell me rights and benefits in these commercialized documents that you call information. That's a commercial for the law merchant. Yeah, it absolutely is, but I mean, I feel for these people that, um, you know, feel like they're doing the right thing, they're trying to um, prove their case, and, you know, a lot of times can't afford Ford, an attorney, uh, let alone the uh, the whole uh, idea. I mean, he, we don't want you to have an attorney. Uh, right, and if we take everybody through all the way, the entire walk in the audios. But, yeah, so, I mean, this guy came in as his own representation. The judge is biased against that. They all are, really, because, um, you know, they got to uh, trick you out a little bit more to get that cognitive judgment right but the judge does that he just becomes your attorney you just don't know it and think it's uh, just normal but it's you know it's really just attorney work product doctrine anyways if you want to read more about this story it was at uh, Sacramento County Family Court News dot blog spot <laughs> yeah. dot com. no wonder it's a doctrination it's from a family court presentation yeah <laughs> It's written by Courtroom Science Incorporated. It's interesting. Now this one here I want to touch on a little bit here because this just, uh, I'm sure you have some comments on it. Let me just read the headline. Pageant mom fed her teenage daughter tapeworms so she could lose weight. Girl left screaming in agony over a toilet bowl writhing with the uh, parasites. A pageant mother from Florida fed her teenage daughter tapeworms to help her slim down for competition. She purchased the eggs, which hatched after her daughter ingested them in Mexico. 
What is in public law say? Get rid of that psychopath viewing her daughter as an object to be whittled down to whatever size or shape fits your agenda for the day. North Korea, you go as a citizen. The poor little girl, that's all I got to say. Sick. I mean, the pageant's more important than her daughter's health. Oh, I'm sure Kim can I mean, figure out ways to, uh, Allow that mother to be productive in North Korea. Woman arrested for sneaking into maternity ward with lifelike baby dolls claimed she was trying to sell them to nurses. Yeah, I know she was going to kidnap a child, maybe. Taking okay. babies in there and trying to pretend that she walked in with a baby. Well, maybe she was going to walk out with a baby. She needs a psychopath. Let's find out if she's a psychopath or not. Yeah, that's what I would say. Uh... Okay, I'm trying to get another story up here. Let's see. Uh, then uh, there, there's this, uh, just some off, off the topic uh, news here. There's that giant uh, half mile crack in the earth in Mexico. There's another hole, too. We're all turning them, too. Syria gave us one. God is good. Microsoft avoids $30 billion in taxes by keeping. $93 billion offshore, Microsoft revealed the startling figures in the SEC filing earlier this year. Yeah, I saw the news of that today, but it didn't indicate anything. It paid approximately, um, I don't know, the income was like 290 or something, and I, I need to revisit that and find out. Find out what kind of tax bracket he's already in, or whatever happened. But um, it was interesting to see that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see more stuff on the James Foley. Yeah, that was it. It looks like an FBI hit because of the level of terrorism that they were exposing the other journalists to. It was like a, a shut up kind of thing. And they, they did the same thing with um, Lindbergh, Lindbergh's son. And Lindbergh went off on Congress. Well, the media right now is exposing all of their little criminal acts and stuff. And it sounds like they just, the FBI decided to whack Foley and see if they can get him to shut up. But hopefully, you know, they're like we are because you got to keep going forward. The only way to stop them is to actually stop them. That is by the evidence. Cops arrested for drug trafficking and transporting dealers. Uh, this is um, from nationofchange.org. Uh, and um, it says in a New York federal court this week, former Sheriff's Deputy Charles Fuller pleaded guilty to one count of attempting to aid and about the possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Deputy Fuller admitted to accepting protection money to transport a drug dealer along with the suspected packages of cocaine while off duty. Unbeknownst to Fuller, the drug dealer was an FBI confidential informant. Always. On February 19th, the FBI informant paid Deputy Fuller thousand dollars to safely transport him and 250 grams of cocaine from Albany to Warren County. That's the FBI just rolling on the law enforcement officer. They're always the, 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 the ones catching people. By setting them up. Right. After completing the trip, Fuller agreed to transport the drug dealer again on February 27th. Fuller raised the price to 4000 because the informant would be carrying a kilogram of cocaine this time. Instead of using cocaine, the FBI gave the informant a kilogram of white powder that looked similar to the drug. Since Fuller never inspected the packages, he had no idea that the FBI agents were preparing to arrest him. Yeah, well, he never got drugs either, so you can't charge him with any kind of drug offense. He placed Fuller in custody and charge recovered the $5,000 in marked bills that the informant had paid him. Yeah, 27 CFR 72.11. There's evidence of the FBI promoting and, and doing commercial criminal activity in front of your eyes. They cannot arrest people for 
undercutting Congress. That's unlawful on its face. And they cannot arrest people who are not undercutting Congress, on, uh, which is unlawful on its face. You can't arrest people for commercial activity. There's no such thing as undercutting Congress anymore. That is not outside of the public law. You know, this is ridiculous. And here the FBI took another law enforcement age, officer. Saratoga County Sheriff Michael Zerlo stated, We will not tolerate corruption among our ranks. Yeah, our promise to the people of Saratoga County is that we will continue to work diligently to ensure that every member of this office deserves the respect and trust of our community. Yet, he needs pay, no atten yeah, pay no attention that we're uh, selling charity bonds to the attorneys right. and uh, involved in uh, human trafficking. And that one needs a psych about. <coughs> that yeah. uh, sheriff? Yep. Yeah. Yep, that sounds like one of the agents themselves because they're protecting Congress and acting under acts of commerce and private acts, 27 CFR 72.11. Yeah, so... Save that one. I'll send it on through to our law enforcement. Yep, again, that's at nationchange.org and you can read more about that there. And, uh, let's see... Actually, quite a long story. Uh, let's see what else we got um, from the various news around the world. Uh, from fresh-faced teen bank robber to Utah's public enemy number one, new mugshot reveals the evolution of a white supremacist gang member in just eight years. And guy who goes from a clean cut looking young man to bald tattooed uh, guy uh, with devil horns tattooed to his forehead. Crazy. And see here, he recently broke out of a halfway house in the Salt Lake City area where he was on supervised release after being sentenced in 2013 to 21 months for bank fraud. His photo was released on Thursday by the Salt Lake Metro Gang Unit. Ten hours later, he was arrested following numerous public tips and back behind bars at the Weber County Jail. And let's see here. The first charge was, uh, he was 19. This is Charlie Lewis Sanford, who's now 28. Um, he was charged with uh, armed bank robbery in Olympus Grove and jailed in 2006. But yeah, these uh, these guys uh, really just buy into this racism and don't realize they're just falling right into the playbook that Congress would like them to play into because they cash in off that stuff. So, uh, whoops! Congressman's office apologizes about Facebook ad for veterans' benefits that featured Soviet military medals. The office of New Jersey Congressman Scott Garrett is red-faced over the advertisement meant to highlight his work for veterans' benefits. Yeah. Accidentally expose yourself as Nazi Germany there, Senator? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um... What a Freudian slip. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, John Lennon's killer is up for parole for the eighth time. Yoko Ono fights the decision to release Mark David Chapman after 33 years. Yoko Ono is again fighting to keep the man responsible for murdering her late husband John Lennon behind bars. Mark David Chapman has met with parole officers, and a decision is expected as early as next week. You know, now every he murdered. Time, he and mur and right? every time the federal government comes forth with threats against Yoko Ono, they should be charged with that because they're threatening to release a murderer upon her. They're terrorizing her. It is. It's terrorism. And how many times? Four times of terrorism that they've. Eight. Eight this times? This is the eighth time. They've been, been terrorizing Yoko Ono since they killed 
uh, John Lennon, the FBI, was responsible for his death. He wanted to get rid of the uh, International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union, which is, of course, traded as Rome on Dun & Bradstreet. That, that whole little group there, and, and um, you know, Lennon knew a lot of information and, and uh, terrorized his widow. It's absolutely foul. That's underhanded even for Congress. But we've seen them do much worse. I mean, they, they broke into that one widow's house and, and kept saying they were there to arrest her husband or something and he was passed away and they, they used law enforcement to terrorize her for, for three years. They, they're terrible, terrible to the widows. Stop allowing these things. You, everybody just witnessed um, Casey Kasem's widow. I mean, Jeannie, they, they terrorized her through the medical industry, psychological industry. Um, they, there is no worse than Congress, than these criminal Confederates. Sick. Man wrongly jailed for 24 years for killing his daughter in a house fire to go free after conviction is overturned. Hantak Lee, now 79, a former New York businessman whose arson conviction was overturned in the death of his daughter, was freed from prison today after 24 years behind bars. A businessman. He was in competition with Congress. They whacked his daughter and put him in prison for 24 years. Or they just... Horrifying. Or they just, yeah, he's got some evidence together uh, under the attorney work product doctrine and say, well, yeah, you're guilty. That's exactly what we got to offset some congressional bankruptcy here and, you know, your competition with us, so... And you know they killed his daughter. They have to. That's what they did to, um, you know, look at the show that Congress put on with uh, Lindbergh's son, the Lindbergh kidnapping. Charles Lindbergh stood up on the House floor in 1917 and called J.P. Morgan and Congress out as a bunch of criminals, co-conspirators of Confederacy, and, um, you know, next thing he knows, uh, you know, babies being kidnapped and, and uh, murdered. Thomas McFadden, they did the same thing with that uh, congressman. And, uh, of course, Nancy Schaefer, they're good at this kind of thing. You know, they just shut people up. Thomas Foley is the most recent victim of, of the FBI. Uh, traumatizing. Because shock doctrine is an is a easy amnesia creation tactic you know you got all this stuff going on and you start realizing that congress is your enemy and that attorneys are satan and all of a sudden crap starts happening and that's exactly what they did to me they, they whacked my husband on me uh, through the medical industry and um for the next three years they kept me under they, they killed 37 members of the family altogether i mean it was just constant barrage attempting to make me forget what what I knew and what I had seen already and it's just constant until now until now uh, something that um, I ran across today I thought was pretty interesting maybe we we'll get your two cents on it here uh, starting Friday and today you can buy uh, in Colorado you buy Colorado cash and support local businesses. The program is called Kojax. And you can use Kojax cash at 80 businesses across the Denver metro area. Yeah, but trying to form a new state? The, well, I don't know. The money has the same cash value as the dollar bills you carry in your wallet. But you can only use Kojax cash at businesses with the Kojax network. This can save you money because there's a 4 to 5 ratio for consumers. Uh -huh. For example, $80 will get you $100 Kojax. It's currently a members only program for businesses and customers, or consumers rather. Uh, you have to go to Kojax's website and sign up to order Kojax cash. Well, do they have a, a minting commission anywhere? Because otherwise, that's unlawful, and uh, we need to check into that. Send that to me. I, didn't, I haven't heard of that one, but that is outside of the public law. And it's, uh, they cannot be printing their own money there and trying to be a new state when they have a bankruptcy that they need to take care of. 
right. Uh, the businesses involved buy into the program and they get professional services within the Kojax network in return. Yeah, I just thought that was uh, pretty peculiar. Absolutely, they're trying to escape accountability again. So, there's you know. only one way to go to prison under the 1929 Geneva Convention. What is that, though? Escape? That's so right. 80, 80 sets of attorneys, 80, 80 businesses, you said, were trying to escape in Colorado. That is interesting. Yeah, it was on uh, KDVR.com. Um, mm -hmm. And now let's see if I can... Um, and their businesses, they're all lost at sea. They... Uh, Nobody to claim them except for us. We're going to have to step in there and protect them from themselves. Obama administration broke the law with Bo Birdall swap for Taliban five prisoners, finds Congress probe. The yeah, Defense Department failed to notify the relevant congressional committee at least 30 days in advance of the exchange. They're trying to tell veterans that they jump through hoops for this military personnel, but it's just a trumped up story. They don't do that to Vietnam veterans. They don't do that to go for veterans. They don't do that to any other veteran except for these FBI agents putting on a presentation to say they were kidnapped and then uh, their government saved them. Your government today, okay, here, uh, I posted this earlier on my Facebook from the nation.com. 620,000 military families rely on food pantries to meet basic needs. These are not even veterans. These are human beings on military pay that cannot afford to eat. Now, you reported on this last year several times. Talk about what you found out last year. They were, you, they were pilfering money out of the Defense Department. They were rationing deployed military members uh, down to like two meals a day or something. I mean, talk more That's about right. This. Well, yeah, the story uh, from memory then uh, was, um, you know, they spend all this money in uh, selling, um, you, you know, basically uh, uh, travel, uh, five-star hotels, uh, gambling casinos, just, you know, and this is during the time when they were rationing those that were deployed. And then they started, right, they cut back one of the meals a day for the soldiers. And this is back in June of last year, I think it was. Well, then... Well, the finally, administration and the Pentagon are just living it up, high on the hog. Right, that was back in June when they were rationing those that are deployed and on duty. Well, then here in March, I think it was, was when they came out and started closing down their golf clubs and their pools and all of this recreational activity for Pentagon members while the military was being rationed these ugly, ugly, horrifying things were out yucking it up. And again, right here in writing from the nation.com 620,000 military fam families, not members, families rely on food programs to meet basic needs. That is absolutely deplorable. Horrifying. Shame on you. Well, let's see. Uh, other things going on around the world. Uh, let's see, Army General who led coup d'etat in Thailand, named Prime Minister, overthrow of the country's elected government in May, has been followed by crackdown on dissent and increased abuses against those opposed to military rule. Right, always. And then again, it's the same federal involvement. These are federal agents trying to infiltrate. They were trying the same thing in Japan this last year um, through the CIA, the Navy. Um, that upper level uh, Navy security operative, um, defense operative, sorry, he was trying to groom a, a defense corporation in Japan and got nailed for it. That used to be his job. 
you know? They just don't want to be caught. But get out, get your fingers out of the pot everywhere. Everywhere. Attorneys do not belong anywhere where humanity may possibly roam in the future. I don't want my children preyed on. I don't want my grandchildren preyed on. Attorneys need to just be deported. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that will stop this from occurring. Well, let's see. Slightly related here on the Veterans Administration. Uh, all surgeries at Denver VA Hospital canceled next week. Uh, the reason is so technicians can deal with an issue affecting the air handling system that services all seven of the hospital's operating rooms. How many veterans are they going to kill with this one on accident? Our critical surgeries will be moved to other hospitals in the city, though. So wow. we need to watch. Uh, they, 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 they know that they're under the microscope right now well, with they, that latest still, scandal. In Arizona, they still continue to kill veterans. Even yeah. while they were saying, oopsie, oopsie, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. And it, it's still continuing. It never ended. It didn't phase out. It didn't decrease. They just keep giving everybody lip service. Oops, 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 we unplugged another, oops, oh my goodness, oopsie, I tripped over that cord too. It's always the same ratara. They're still killing veterans. It didn't decrease, it didn't go away. Daily Mail is reporting on um, the mega drought in Western America. A loss of 63 trillion gallons of water has raised the planet by 0.15 inches, it says. Right. Re researchers in San Diego say a 14-year drought is raising the ground, which in some locations in several Western U.S. states is lifted by as much as 0.15 one six inches in just 18 months. And it's not the drought, it's the corporations sucking up the water. Corporations do not come before human beings. If corporations are over consuming water, they need to stop consuming water and they need to be cut off. Corporations are not life. Humans require water. Well, here's another one on uh, ex-Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, we mentioned earlier in the first hour. Uh, he's living with a priest after moving out of the home he shared with his exhausting wife. Yeah. McDonnell left the home he, was, he shared with his wife of 38 years, Maureen, the week before their trial began. He revealed as he testified in their corruption trial on Thursday. Oh, it was a priest that got him to turn on his wife. That's really sad because they both turned on each other. So she's probably got a domestic violence shelter on her, her side, and he's got a priest on her his side, and they're all pit against each other. And the attorneys are laughing all the way to the bank. It's not a good idea to get an attorney, a priest. Our domestic violence shelter to coach you as to what to say when you're looking to redistribute your ex. Nobody ever ends up with anything except for the attorneys. In Hiroshima, Japan, um, there's been uh, landslides two days ago and uh, the death toll may be as high as 90, they're saying. Oh. I haven't heard. And landslides, we know, are usually caused by development. Yeah, clear cutting, um, poor water management could be, uh, it could be anything. I have to see it and see what went on. But um, usually it's caused by the state, state influence, looking to cash in on those insurance benefits. You can't build something if you don't burn it to the ground first or raise it in some manner. Mexican couple arrested after keeping their 10-year-old son in chains all day because he wouldn't keep still. The couple who kept their 10-year-old son chained up all day for misbehaving have been arrested by police in Mexico for child cruelty and are due to appear in court in coming days. Well, open that one further because a lot of the times they say a couple, but that does not mean the parents. It could be, usually it means the foster parents or somebody that really doesn't want kids. 
that do that to children and, and um, a lot of times you'll find that that's not a biological father or a biological mother and it could be that they're neither one or biological. Let's see here. Very oh. rare. Seventeen percent of the time usually it's very rare for that to be a biological father. Let's see. Alejandro Hernandez, 44, a carpenter, and Beatriz Enriquez, 34, admitting chaining son Alvar by his ankles, but claimed they did it because it was impossible to control him. Enriquez says he is always in trouble at school and at home because he just won't keep scale. Uh, it's called uh, just... Uh, being a kid. Energies of youth, yeah. Uh, well, it looks like the school was pushing them into doing something, though. He wasn't holding still at school, and so they were pushing them into getting a diagnosis. I want the school investigated. Yeah, let's see. Um, can't, can't scroll down yet here. This is... Uh, Crazy scripting again? Mm, yeah, I just uh, have a full board here, I guess. Um, let me uh, on the screen here. Okay, all right. So, um. Did you see the, um, uh, there's an ISIS terror threat sent to Chicagoans today. Quote, we are in your streets, Chicago. It's chilling Islamic State terror tweet. The location of the tweet was 307 North Michigan Avenue at the city's Old Republic building. Where are those threats coming from, both? Can't be from the FBI. Tell me, I think it's Emmanuel Goldstein. Absolutely. It's like all these story headlines should be Emmanuel Goldstein strikes again. Ooh, HP. HP is feeling the uh, attorney influence. You've got to cover this one. Hewlett Packard? Yes. Uh, from the New York Times today. Big payoffs in HP lawsuit for lawyers. When lawyers for Hewlett Packard shareholders filed a lawsuit contending HP Management Board abdicated their duties and engaged in unlawful behavior in the disastrous 2011 takeover autonomy, it looked as if we might finally find out what really happened. Was it a huge fraud by top executives at the British software company, as HP has asserted in writing down nearly $9 billion of its $11 billion acquisition? Was it incomplete incompetence at HP, which shelled out so much for, for a company that had been rejected by nearly every other potential buyer, or some of both? How naive to think that a shareholder's suit, please realize that word, shareholder suit, would turn out to have anything to do with the truth, let alone any meaningful relief for HP's long-suffering shareholders. If the plaintiff's lawyers in the case led by the respected and well-connected San Francisco firm of Kochet, Peter, and McCarthy have their way in court next week, the questions will go unanswered. Not only that, the lawyers are essentially, essentially jumping ship, proposing to settle the suit and join forces with HP in its pursuit of autonomy former executives. In return... HP will pay the shareholders' lawyers an $18 million retainer and up to a total of $48 million in fees. What will the shareholders get? They'll get no money. On the contrary, it's their money HP will be spending on lawyers' fees. They'll get no personnel or board changes. They won't find out who's to blame or what went wrong. What they will get are some corporate governance reforms, which HP needn't disclose in any detail. <laughs> it's the greatest show on earth, folks. The greatest show on earth. 
court jesters without those little silly hats and shoes. And I was suggesting uh, yesterday that I think that hat should be sewn on these attorneys so that they can be identified more quickly. Well, yeah, suit and tie should be traded for a jester's hat and some um, appropriate uh, robes, maybe some loop music as they enter the courtroom and such like that. Now, we have caught Congress in promoting racial warfare, promoting racial tension, promoting uh, civil war, civil war risks. Today, the Huffington Post has evidence that they are also promoting uh, transphobia. In a headline, transphobic edits made to Wikipedia appear to have come from Capitol Hill. Computers at the U.S. House of Representatives have been blocked from editing Wikipedia entries after controversial changes were made to transgender pages, including those that... Let me get to it here. I was reading off the headline. Back to that kid in Mexico, he said he had some brothers and sisters, didn't say anything about them being foster parents, so... No, it could be. It sounds like the school is pushing them into... That's what it sounds like um, to me. ...doing that, including those with information about actress Laverne Cock. The Hill reports anonymous users... Oops, it scrolled up again. His scripts, it's a lot of um, uh, garbage and my CPU doesn't want to deal with it, but... You can find this on HuffingtonPost.com, uh, Laverne Cox, Wikipedia, Capitol Hill. Oh, I do want to chime in on um, the uh, arrest records were made public of all the arrests at the Ferguson protests. Mm -hmm. And a very small minority of those arrests were of people that actually lived in Ferguson. Right. So that's just disgusting. And, and again, stop harassing uh, that came out on media. CNN. You can go and um, pull up the PDF. And and keep watching, folks, because here, you know, Congress is racist. They're transphobic. They're they're homophobic. They're everything contrary to humanity there there is. And um, we need to just be aware. Stop patronizing this thing. Do you have anything else to add? It's two hours on the mark. Uh, border closing over Ebola fears. Uh, we didn't cover much of the Ebola news tonight, but... Um, uh, 1,400 and some deaths. We'll have to cover that tomorrow on uh, leaving the farm. I'll, I'll go more into depth on it. Today was just a very profound day. And, uh, lots of, oh, John Riley got evicted from uh, just Reynolds House today. Well, the other day, actually. Uh, got verification today, so that was interesting to uh, witness these things because there was some nervousness abounding and, and uh, got to the bottom of it. And it's no longer a threat to the Jonasons, the House of Jonasons. Sorry. Yeah, so that was pretty good news. Absolutely, and you can find previous videos of John Riley on the YouTube channel, Angry Riley. Uh, at one point in time, he was manhandling Bonnie. That about do it. Okay, well, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and um, um, everybody can um, catch Tammy tomorrow night, of course, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard on leaving the farm, and um, cool. I might stop by for a few there, too, so uh, we'll have some more breaking news, uh, and um, goodies for you tomorrow, I'm sure, so be well till then.